Hi, I'm Mike Atroski. I'm here at KubeCon in Copenhagen, and I'm here with Craig Peters from JFrog. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Great. So tell me a little bit about what JFrog does. Sure. So JFrog is a repository manager and platform for enabling software developers to collaborate effectively across distributed teams with all the different package types they use, all the different tools, and do it in a way that's safe and allows uh, software to be delivered faster to any endpoint. What do you mean by a way that's safe? How does that work with containers? Oh, well, that's a really great question. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> it's as though we staged or practiced this. Um, and yet we didn't. <laughs> absolutely not. So um, what I mean by safe is that uh, when you deploy an application into any environment, so let's take Kubernetes as an example. Why would we be talking about that here? But if you're deploying to Kubernetes, you, know, you have... Uh, uh, you might have packaged your application in Helm, right? So you might have Helm charts that you're using to deploy the application. Those depend on Docker images, right? Those Docker images, you know where they are. They're in some sort of secure registry. How do you know what's in those containers? So what JFrog Artifactory provides, we call it the Kubernetes registry. Oh, I see. Yeah. The Kubernetes registry uh, of Artifactory uh, allows you to have in one place uh, the source of truth for all of the data all of the package types, all of the dependencies that have been built into the container image and then packaged into a Helm chart and used to deploy the application. You can use any other packaging type. You don't, you know, it doesn't depend on Helm, but essentially we act as a Docker registry that understands all the dependencies so you know where things are. And then as a repository manager, what that means is that you can create um, different repos for different teams at different stages of development lifecycle. So I might have a different one for my app team. App App testing, you know, exactly. Exactly, Got exactly. Okay. dev, QA, production. So production can only read from production sure. repositories. And then, you know, you don't want to duplicate all those things. We essentially have a promotion model. So based on, you know, you might want to make Move it, it so from one registry to another or something like exactly. that. Exactly, automatically. And it's only, like, you want to make it so only service accounts can do that. Got it. And then you want to make that completely independent of the underlying storage and use any auth mechanism. Right, that's that's what we do. And. Do you want to talk me through what's happening right here? Absolutely. So the story here is that you're deploying an application that's packaged as Docker images inside a Helm chart to, to Kubernetes, right? Well, what's in it? It's Docker images. If you look at an image, it actually is usually layers, you know, right? We use layering and, and all that that consists of your application, whatever code you've written. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Maven, right? You might have written Java and use a build tool, or it might be NPM. And you know, you've got that bit, you've got the packages you've depended upon, which are like external packages, and you might have operating systems. So the idea from left to right is that using a common registry framework, you can manage all exactly all the way to the lowest level. And that's actually really important for uh, companies that where the software production uh, pipeline is their production. And uh, you can't be blocked if you have an issue getting to the public NPM, for example, right? You, that, and that stops people in reality. And so what we do is we create what's called a virtual repository that sits on top of your local repo and the remoted repos that you have a local cache of. And that allows organizations to have really good control over what packages go into their applications. And so tell me a bit about Grafeus and how, or sorry, tell me how, how JFrog works with Grafeus. So Grafeus is Google's open source um, metadata image server. Yeah. Uh, and you were one of the launch partners for that back in October. Um, how, how, does that, how does that work together? Absolutely. So one of the things you have to do in this kind of a scenario is you have to have a really deep understanding of the metadata about all of the different package types. Grafeus is an open API for exchanging metadata about those assets uh, between many different systems. A lot of different tools in the ecosystem uh, will generate different kinds of information about those. So the, the first things we started with, obviously, are vulnerabilities. Everybody right. wants security and safety. Yes, security. So, yeah, so one of our products is called X-Ray, and X-Ray is a part of this package. And what it does is it uh, has a deep understanding of the layered packaging. It, it unpacks them all, uh, understands the components that go into a package, uh, matches them against vulnerabilities, but we also do licenses and, and things like that. Uh, the point of Grafeus is that it makes it very easy and lightweight to exchange information between us and other Grafeus data providers. So say Google has a, has a huge database of, of um, 
different kinds of data, like maybe performance or compatibility data, you need a way to aggregate that in your CI pipeline so that you can make automated decisions about whether or not so, you know, your software is ready to move from staging into production. Sure. And so you don't want to have to go and query all of the different systems. X-Ray provides a way using GraphAS to aggregate all of that data into one, system, one call. Great. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us at um, the floor at KubeCon. Really glad to. Are you having a good time here? Oh, it's been great. We've had lots of great conversations, and you know, the, we're really glad to be here and participating in this community. Thank you so much. Hopefully, we'll see you in Seattle. Absolutely. And, uh, and thank you all for joining and watching us here at KubeCon. Thank you.